to Love Ultras episode three. I'm John Kinston and uh, I thought in this episode I would like to do talk about my training uh, for ultras. Um, I started ultra running in 2007, that was my first race and in episode two I talked about my uh, seven flings that I've done and thanks for the feedback that I've had from people who've listened to those. And I think one of the things that I've done over the last 10, 11 years is to sort of work out what works for best for me in my training. Um, I, I suppose I come from the point that I really want to try and do these for as long as I can. I'm now 58 and one of my long-term goals is to try and run 100 ultras by the time I'm 70. I've done, uh, I've done 39 so far, so it's basically another five a year for the next uh, 12 years or so that will get me there. And my inspiration really is Andy Cole, my good friend Andy. He started ultra running around about the age I am now and he has done well over probably nearer 50 ultras and some really long ones between now and he's now in his sort of I think 67, 68. So he's my inspiration. If he can do it, then hopefully so can I. And But I think one of the things that I've tried to do over the last few years is uh, try and work out a a pattern of running in my training which is enough miles to be able to complete and enjoy ultras but not too much that it burns me out and that I, uh, I lose interest and I suppose over the years I've worked out what I feel for me uh, is something which does work. I suppose my overall mileage over the last 10 years really has been around about 2,000 miles sometimes I'm just under sometimes I'm just over which works out roughly about 40 miles a week and to do that and obviously there's some weeks are higher than that and some weeks are lower but that's the average over the year and I think one of the things that when I started is how do you train for me initially it was the West Harlem Way race and 95 mile race so how do you train for that and over the years I say I've worked out a pattern which seems to work for me I think one of the great things about training for ultras is that there's lots of different ways of doing it and this is just my thoughts of what's worked for me so if you're new to ultras or you've been running for a while there might be some things that are similar in your training there might be some things that are different but uh, we, we each work out what works best for us so take from this what you want and uh, just ignore the rest and I thought I would look at it over three areas in, in this short talk the first one is my monthly pattern uh, the second one is my long runs and uh, I see those as the bedrock really of my training and then my weekly pattern and hopefully those three things will fit together in the way that I train. So my monthly pattern, I think I've worked out over the years that uh, I work best with a, a three weeks of build up and then an easy week. I remember the first year when I did the West Harlem Way race in 2007, I tried to do too much. Every week I tried to build up, I tried to run further, I tried to run longer and without any real breaks or easy weeks. And I remember doing the fling and then picking up an injury and it was because I just didn't have an easy week after some of my long runs. So what I've found works best for me now is to, on a monthly pattern, to have three, easy, three build up weeks and then uh, building up to my long run and then an easy week. So it would be something like the first week would be sort of uh, 45 miles, the second week would be 50, the third week might be as much as 60 or even more and then I'd have an easy week which would be 20 to 25. And I found that pattern has generally worked pretty well for me um, so that there's a build up and then there's a, a chance to recover and then to be able to start again and build that up. The second thing which I try to build into my training has become a key part, a key element, is my long runs. Uh, right from starting the West Harlem Way uh, training in 2007, I remember sitting down and writing out what I wanted to do. And one of my goals was uh, to have a monthly long run where I got on the course particularly, and because I was new to me at that point, and to try and run a bit further each month. So, and I've used that really pretty well consistently over the last uh, 10 years. So my, if I was doing the West Harlem Way in, uh, in uh, June, then I would do something like this. In January, I'd look for a 30 mile run. In February, a 35 mile. In March, a 40, 42 mile. Uh, I tend to do the fling in April, which would be the 53. And then in May, I would do a two day run. So I'd do 70 miles over the two days. 
And so that would be my build up to so that, that long run once a month on the route, making sure I practiced all my gear and food and pacing and the rest of it was a, a key thing. Now, if I was doing the Hardmores races, they tend to be the 110 that I've done twice and the 160 I did last year, they tend to be early May. So I would basically move everything a month further on. So I'd start probably in the, late in December and then build up in, in January for that. Uh, a couple of years ago, I did the Lakeland 100 for the second time and that's the end of, Ju or the end of July. So I was conscious that I didn't really want to start my build up in January because it was a long time to keep that training. So I didn't start my ultra training till about March and then I had sort of uh, build up from there. So depending on what race it is, depending on where I've moved my calendar. But basically those monthly long runs were the key thing for me. And I don't want to do too many of those. Uh, I think for me one, one a month is about right. Um, I might obviously I'll do other runs as well 15 20 mile runs but those long ones would be a monthly run and then the third thing that I would put in with my training is my weekly pattern and again over the years I've worked out roughly this seems to work well for me and I look to be running five times a week uh, in the core of my training and I would try and build up sort of eight to ten weeks for a race uh, if I any more than that then it's, I start to get a little bit stale I like to sort of have two cycles really of uh, of eight of four weeks where three weeks an easy week and then three more weeks then an easy week and that's the pattern I've done but the way I would t I would uh, I would my weekly pattern would go is on a Monday night as much as possible I try and get along to the club I run with Kilbarkin and we do a fart leg session on a Monday night which is a speed session and the actual core work is about 30 minutes of running so we would have a couple of miles warm-ups and some uh, stretches and um, sort of uh, strides and then we would do something like 10 by 3 minutes or 6 by 5 minutes or a ladder or whatever it is but it normally adds up to about 30 minutes of running and I'm working hard on those nights uh, and I do feel that that speed uh, training does help me with the longer stuff as well. Tuesday would be a rest day or I work about five miles away from home and if I can I like to cycle to and from work on a Tuesday as a recovery. It doesn't always work out depending on what I've got on at work whether I need my car or not um, but if possible I try and uh, try and cycle to work so I find that's quite good just to do something without putting too much stress on my legs so it's either a cycle or a, uh, or a rest day. On Wednesday I would aim to do a, either a tempo run or a steady run or maybe just an easy run but if possible I'd like to do a tempo run and it would normally be between about six and seven miles so the idea is I would normally do a mile warm-up and then I would do a four mile tempo and then a mile cool down but I mix it up as well so sometimes I might do a, a mile easy and then a mile at tempo pace then a mile easy and then another mile at tempo pace or do two and then and then an easy and then two I'd vary it a little bit but the idea of trying to run just a little bit faster uh, for some of the time on, in that run. Thursday I would aim to do some sort of hill session so it's either uh, around Brodie Park which is here in Paisley not far I have a little loop there which it, each loop of a mile is two ups and two downs so that uh, tends to be a really good one or if I run from work I go into Pollock Park and I've got a few little reps there that I can do and then when the weather gets better from this sort of time onwards April onwards or even just before sometimes I like to do a run up and down Ben Lomond and that would be a really good session so I, I always like to go up the Ptarmigan Ridge and I try and run walk up there as fast as I can and then run down and it's that run down which normally takes me about 40 minutes or so and I'm running the whole way and really burning the quads and that gives them a real benefit so that's what I'm hoping to do and aim, aiming to do on those Ben Lomond runs. Friday I'll be back to a, a rest again and again if I can cycle to work I would do so Tuesday and Friday are my easy rest days or cycle days and then at the weekend I'll be up on doing my longer runs and my weekly my monthly pattern so on a Saturday would be I'd do a 15 mile run on the Braes the first Saturday of the month 
and that would be uh, just a, probably take me about sort of three hours or so. And then the next week I like to go to the Kilpatricks and I can do an 18, 19 mile run there. And that normally takes me around about four hours. And then the third Saturday would be my longer run. So I say in January it'd be 30, February it'd be uh, 35, March 40, etc. So those would be my longer runs on that Saturday. And if much as possible, I try and do those with people because I really enjoy just chatting and running with people and sharing the trails. And then Sunday, I would do a, a, a probably 11 mile run up on the Braes if I can and uh, try and build that up. And that's something which I've probably done over the last three or four years. I think early on, I didn't tend to do back to backs at the weekend, but I'm finding uh, that's been a, a beneficial part of my training over the last three or four years is getting out Saturday and Sunday but not massive miles but uh, as I said it, if uh, weekly building up and then having a, a run on the, the Sunday as well so that's my basic pattern of my training I found that it seems to work okay for me I've not got too many injuries over the last few years few little niggles but nothing too bad and I'm sure part of it is that I've, I, I have rest I have rest days and also have easy weeks built into my training so I'm not pushing myself too hard too too quickly and try and build up and I suppose as well I've been doing this now for 10 11 years I've been running 2,000 miles a year uh, plus before I started the ultras I, I, I've been running since I was a kid so I think I've got a fair bit of um, running in my legs over the years which helps me as well but I've got one confession to make though, which I know will probably horrify a lot of people and is uh, I'm, I don't feel uh, proud of this, but I don't do any stretching. It's just not part of my routine. Uh, I know people say it's the, the thing you must do and you must stretch and you must uh, uh, build up or, uh, the core muscles and the rest of it, but I don't know, I, I just feel as though I've, I just love to run and <laughs> it feels as though to devote time to do that it just feels that I should be running to uh, I'd rather be running so I must admit I, I'm not a, someone who's great at stretching uh, I, I, I suppose as I get older then I will probably need to, to do it more and I do think maybe it's something which I should be thinking about more seriously but I just want to be honest and say that I don't really do a lot of stretching so there's my uh, training philosophy there's my plans and I think out of all the things that I do, I would say that the, the long runs are the core. They're the big stones. They're the ones that I don't want to miss. I don't mind missing the odd tempo run. Don't mind missing the odd fart leg session. Don't mind missing the odd uh, hill session. But those weekends and those longer runs, time on feet and getting up on the trail and, and being on the route, they're my key ones that I want to try and make sure I don't miss if, if at all, if at all possible. And I do like to have my plan. I do like to, to plan out my training. Uh, for example, for this year uh, in January, I worked out my training from January through to the Fling, and then I'll do again between the Fling and the West Harlem Way. Um, and then after that, we're on holiday, and then I'll build up to the Devil's Race, and then, up, and then the Ring of Fire. Um, so I will have my plan, but I do like to be flexible as well. And so that if things aren't going quite so well and I need to have an easy day or just miss a day, then I'm willing to do that. Uh, willing? Yeah, willing. Um, not excited. I don't like to miss too many, but I, I do want to be flexible. And if things aren't going so well, for example, a couple of months, a couple of weeks, about a month ago, I was struggling and um, I did a run on the Kilpatricks and then I was supposed to run the Braves on the Sunday and my legs just felt really heavy and I decided just to not run on the braise and give myself another day off. And I think that was, was wise and, and certainly helped me. So I like to have a plan, but I also like to be flexible and respond to how things are going. Uh, and particularly with those Wednesday, Thursday, if I do a tempo run and a hill session, maybe that's too much if I've done a hard Monday as well. So sometimes I'll make the tempo just an easy run or the hill will be just a, an easy off-road run rather than a hard hill session. So I try and vary it a little bit. So that's my training and I'm hoping that uh, this will keep me going. I, I, I find this can fit in with my lifestyle. Uh, it doesn't, obviously it takes time, but it doesn't overbear. It doesn't do too much. There's times when I've thought about whether I should maybe aim for 50, 60, 70 miles a week on average for the year. But I, I just wonder whether that's sustainable for me. Whereas I feel 2,000 miles a year is sustainable. I've been doing it for the last 10 years, so I know it is. 
and I feel that's enough miles for me to enjoy the races um, and but not too many that I get bored or I lose interest or I get injured so that's my thinking behind that.